hello YouTube, uh, Louis here. I am doing a review um, of the book Trade the Ratio. Uh, this was requested by Carl Ushanka, who is the author of this wonderful book. Before you tune out, um, I just want to tell you there is some information in here that could literally change the way that you stack precious metals. But uh, if you um, have been stacking for a while, if you have been stacking and losing money on your bullion purchases due to declining spot price, um, if you've been looking for a way to participate in stacking and the protection that it offers, the insurance that it offers, and you're also looking for in a way to um, turn it into more of an investment than just an insurance policy, and um, and uh, make uh, basically the metals kind of pay for themselves as you hold them. This is an absolute must read. I just finished the book and uh, I am going to go through it quickly, but that is my preface is um, for you advanced stackers, especially uh, those of you that are investing uh, large amounts of money into precious metals. You're really committed to it and uh, it is uh, it's something that you have a passion for and you, uh, you're you going to do it no matter what, then uh, this book is uh, definitely your friend. Um, so uh, let's move on. I have to start by saying I am not an investment professional and I'm not giving investment advice here. Um, and uh, Carl is basically a stacker uh, at heart. Um, he, uh, he chronicles the last uh, 30, 40 years of precious metal stacking and goes into um, you know, both the, uh, the delights and uh, the trauma of stacking precious metals. And what he offers here um, is something that you can absolutely relate to. So uh, I am not going to spend much time on the introductions or the prefaces. Um, anybody who is watching my channel is probably pretty committed to precious metals. Now, um, <clears throat> the problem with precious metals is over time, uh, let's see if we can get a, a view of the, there, there are a few pages uh, in here uh, on the preview on Amazon. Um, th this book is so cheap. It's like, you know, the cost of a, a half ounce of silver. So, uh, and even less if you get the digital <coughs> version. Um, but uh, I think you will, uh, you, you will resonate with, uh, with Carl's perspective. But I just want to get a picture of the, uh, the chart of silver. So there we go. Uh, there, there is a graph of silver. And as you know, um, it has had run-ups and then it has had meltdowns. And uh, what Carl talks about is the process of uh, investing in silver. But if you have been invested in bullion, and, th and this has nothing to do with collector coins, numismatics, um, you know, uh, semi-numismatics, uh, low mintage uh, lunars, nothing like that. This is for you bullion stackers, and I know that is the majority of you out there, that if you are invested in gold and or silver, and you happen to hit uh, a 10-year patch where you're on a down cycle like this, um, lots of money was lost, lots of money. And what he does is he reviews the results of a pure stacker with a buy and hold and uh, a dollar cost average approach to his approach, which I will explain to you in a minute. Of course, you'll have to read the book to get all the nuances, but I'm going to boil it down to the simplest of possible um, understandings. Um, so uh, what he uh, so so again, if you had been a buy and hold stacker, well, um, you know you've lost a lot of money. Um, if you had been a buy and hold stacker during uh, the run ups, you also had to be a seller. All right, so you know some of us uh, bought and hold and held but didn't sell, and then you also or have experienced uh, some losses, and at some point you broke even and started losing money again. So, with that all said, let me move on to what he is proposing. He is proposing that you trade the silver to gold ratio. The silver to gold ratio is nothing more than the price of, um, of gold divided by the price of silver. 
I probably said it backwards, the gold, gold to silver ratio, the GSR. All right, the price of gold over the price of silver. How many ounces of silver does it take to buy one ounce of gold? And that, um, I don't believe that chart is in here, but that also fluctuates in ranges. All right, uh, let me pause for one second and see if I can pull up a chart of the GSR. All right, here is a randomly selected chart of the GSR. The GSR moves uh, in ranges that are usually uh, limited out uh, from, oh, say, 40, the high 40s up to the high 80s. So over time, the um, gold over silver ratio how many ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold um, has been as low as 40, 48, or 46 or something, and as high as 80, all right? And it travels in those ranges. It travels in these ranges uh, largely, as Carl will explain, uh, largely for political reasons. Um, a lot of the major events that have moved the gold to silver ratio uh, have been politically driven, whether it was a uh, fear over, um, you know, a, a progressive uh, political election or um, the Hunt brothers cornering, uh, cornering silver market or the stock market crash. Um, and gold and silver do not move in unison all the time. They, they often do, but they don't always, depending on the political environment. And I won't get into that. I think you should read and study history. But what he's done is he has back-tested this theory uh, for 30 or 40 years <clears throat> and, and showed uh, the results if you were to follow his method. So uh, in a nutshell, all right, if you track the, sil the gold to silver ratio, between you know the previous um, the previous ten year history of uh, the gold to silver ratio again between like fifty and eighty, and you watch for deviations outside of that range to buy or sell. All right, so what he is saying is put money aside every month for gold or silver. All right, and wait. What you're waiting for is you're waiting for a buy signal. Sometimes you will get a buy signal for silver, and then you buy it with all the money you've accumulated. And sometimes you will get a buy signal for gold, and then you sell your silver and buy gold. And then sometimes you will get no buy signal at all, and you just wait. But you are waiting for the gold to silver ratio to exit and enter positions. And what he's saying is when silver is cheap related uh, up here, when silver is cheap related to gold, then um, you get out of gold and you get fully into silver. When gold is cheap in relation to silver, you do the opposite. In between, all of the noise in between, you do nothing. You wait and you stack cash. Wait and stack cash. If you get a buy signal, you buy whichever is indicated, and you sell whichever is contraindicated, and then you wait for another buy or sell signal. Now, this is the difficult part, and the part that is uh, somewhat unsatisfying, is that you could go months and months and months. If you're in the middle of the range um, of the gold to silver ratio, his recommendation is do nothing but stack cash. All right, it's a time to be neutral. But when extremes happen and it pushes out of, let's call these uh, bands, right? There's a concept in stocks called Bollinger Bands, but his concept is much easier. It's the rolling 10-year average of the gold to silver ratio. But when you get an explosion out of that band, that is a buy signal. It is also a sell signal to buy either gold or silver, all right? And in doing so, I'm not gonna go into all of his spreadsheets. Uh, he did ask me to go through a spreadsheet, but honestly, I think I would bore you to tears and lose you. Um, but, I would, but he has documented and back-tested that his returns, even in a falling market, are substantial. Whereas the returns of um, a pure bullion stacker in gold or silver, uh, have been pretty bad over the last few years. So um, 
So that's what it is. So uh, do go check it out and give it a read. It, it is actually brilliant. All right. Um, now, will people adopt it? Will people practice it? I don't know, but if you are investing large amounts of your wealth in precious metals, it is definitely worth a read because it is so brilliant and so simple that um, there are very few ways that it could go wrong. I guess one of the ways would be we never again pierce the bands. You know, over time, the uh, the volatility of the GSR diminishes and diminishes, and you go a long time without a trade. So um, I don't like that so much, and I do recommend that you stack gold and silver outside of this methodology. For me personally, I I, I probably will give it a try, and um, but I would not replace my stack with it. Um, what I might do is I might alter my allocations a little bit. Um, I typically have, you know, fairly equal parts of gold and silver and semi-numismatics and numismatics and collector coins and just pure bullion and poured silver. I might reduce the percentage of all of that and dedicate a percentage of my stack to exploring his methodology here. Uh, perhaps on paper, perhaps with physical, but... Um, if you follow it, I think it's pretty hard to mess up because, um, you know, I, I suppose if if uh, the market totally crashes, then whatever you own at that time, you're going to lose money on. But if we stay fairly bound in the ranges that we've been in um, and gold and silver go out of sync with each other as they have at various times, then um, you, you're going to make money doing this. You're just absolutely going to make money from the churn. All right. Well, I hope I haven't lost everybody, but I do think it's worth exploring. Uh, don't. Uh, he has other uh, chapters in the book about how to explore moving from one style of uh, stacking into his uh, methodology here. And uh, I would just say, uh, you know, uh, open your mind to uh, this type of methodology. Um, if the market stays range bound, um, this would definitely produce results. You would be both stacking and uh, investing. All right, please uh, ask your questions, but more importantly, you know, spend a couple of dollars, buy his book, and read it. Uh, chapter four is where it gets good. Um, but he's a stacker. He's just basically a hardcore stacker, and he stacks for many of the reasons that we stack. But he also is an investor, and he's created this tool to help you realize returns on your stack while we're waiting for the big run. All right, uh, please uh, post your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. I think Carl may also post in here, so you could ask him questions. But, um, you know, it, it's definitely uh, wor worth a read. All right, that's my review. Everybody take care. Losing Louis signing out. And I'll put the link to the book down below as well.